Woo! All right, you guys, sorry to leave you hanging. Uh, we were hanging out in the lab portion for too long. Um, I'm gonna jump right in. We just finished connective tissue and that will be recorded, or it was recorded. It's being converted as we speak uh, into, I guess, MP4. Um, and then, oh, really? Can you guys see this converting meeting recording? Thing in the middle of my screen. Yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. You can see this, the converted meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, well, just go over there. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm gonna put it down here. Hopefully it'll be out of the way. Okay, so. Professor, I have a quick question. Oh, go for it. Um, so is this how, like, Thursdays, is this how it's gonna be going forward, like, Tuesdays and Thursdays? Are you going to, I'm like, really like off. Yeah, this week is extra super crazy because I'm trying to catch us up, right? So I'm trying to catch us up with histology because it's really important. You guys need it. Um, I'm going to, we're going to do histology today and then we are going to do integument on Thursday and it's going to be nuts and it's going to be a, a lot of information. And I'm going to be available to you guys. Um, I'll do I'll do some sort of um, office hours if you want me to, but we do have March thirty first off. It's a legal holiday, right? It's Cesar Chavez Day, um, so we will have a full week before the exam, which will cover this histology and the integumentary system. Um, if you guys on Cesar Chavez Day, if if anybody wants to or at some point do like a um, do a Zoom meeting office hours kind of thing, uh, we can do that. Or, and, or there will be, you'll have your SI meeting as well, right? Um, with Joseph, and I hope you guys saw, there's an announcement on Canvas with the link for your SI meetings with him. Um, so there will be that as well. So um, I'll communicate with you guys uh, via email. We can do a poll or something to figure out when would be a good time to have like Zoom office hours kind of a thing. Um, but once this week is over and the exam is over, we start in on bones the week of April 7th, and we're gonna get into a much regular, much more regular schedule. So at that point we will do like, um, I'll do a little lab, I'll do a little lab lecture, not like this, a little lab lecture, and then I'll just hang out and I'll probably like read a book. <laughs> and if you guys have questions, like I'll be here, you know, and we can just sort of like, I'll just be here kind of like open, like my, like I'm sitting in my office with my door open, you know, like come and ask me questions if you want, I'll be here. Um, and then lecture, I'll do, um, I'll do our regular lecture, um, just like it's planned in the syllabus. So exactly as the syllabus is from, um, next week on out, I'm going to try and keep exactly the same. Okay. So I'm uh, sorry, this week is super crazy. No, uh, that's okay. I have a, another question. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, is there any way, so... Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, like my micro professor had issues with conference Zoom, so she asked us to log in at five o'clock. So oh, I had to switch over into hers to make yeah. sure I wasn't missing anything too crucial yeah. either. Well, yeah. when I tried to go back into yours, uh -huh. obviously the time because of the time it didn't allow us to go back in. Are you able to maybe like oh. we're doing that this week? Are you able yeah. to maybe oh, you exit? Mean, like, it won't let you the, come in. If right, like so your lab time was from two to five and there was yeah. like a few of us that couldn't log back in or like just kind of jump back into where you left That's like silly. where we left off i will definitely look into that in my settings there should definitely be the ability to jump in and out so okay. I'll, I'll look at that in my settings make sure that there's such a thing i don't know what you would call that late entry yeah because ins and outs we're going yeah, to look out ins and outs so like that's fine Okay, okay, because they're that's the, like because, standard. That's a dumb. Whatever. Well, it was, but because it went past five o'clock, was um, oh, I was feeling that's why I did over time. Okay, so I'll set an alarm for myself too. Then. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you very I much. Over time. Yep. 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 Okay. Don't go over time. Um, maybe if I make the sessions. Um, for however the hell long I want, then I can just ramble if I want to, and then you guys can stay or not, and I'll, it'll be recorded. Um, I could do that too. This so, is so around 6.30. Sorry? What was that? I didn't catch it. 
Thank you, Professor. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, you guys. So let's let's wrap up connective. Or no, let's. We already wrapped up connective tissue. Um, I didn't talk about mesenchyme in any great detail. I mentioned it at the beginning of the connective tissue um, part of the of my of my lab lecture, my agonizingly long lab lecture. Um, it's basically just embryonic tissue that will go on to become connective tissue. I don't care if you know any more than that, and I do not need for you to be able to identify it visually. Okay. Oh, let's do muscle tissue first and then do nervous tissue after that. So we've got three different types of muscle tissue. They're like super easy compared to connective and epithelial tissue. You've got skeletal muscle tissue, you've got cardiac muscle tissue, and you've got smooth muscle tissue, okay? These are gone over in detail uh, in, other, um, in other chapters. So, we are, so when we actually talk about muscles, the muscular system, all of this tissue, the muscular tissue details are in the muscle chapter and not in the tissue chapter so much. There is muscle stuff. There is muscle tissue in the tissue chapter, obviously. It's on pages 142 through 144, um, if you want to know that. Anyway, skeletal muscle um, can be identified by the fact that it, one, is striated. So not only is it like long and skinny, like sort of tubes like this, but it also is striped. They're all like transversely striped. Um, and that is what striations means, okay? It means this stripiness. Um, they are, again, long. They are cylindrical. These um, muscle strings or muscle, muscle fibers, they're cylindrical. So they are um, round at the ends, right? And they come in bundles. Um, you can tell that it is skeletal muscle because it is, um, they are long tubes, they are striated, and because they are multinucleated, okay, so you've got multiple nuclei in each one of these tubes, okay, so each one of these tubes has multiple, multiple nuclei, so they kind of like, um, it, it's a very, very weird cell structurally. We're going to talk about microscopic muscle stuff when we do get to the muscular system. Um, they're very weird. Um, Long, in, long tubes and multiple nuclei, just, just weird cells. But the function of skeletal muscle is, of course, your voluntary movement, right? So skeletal muscles are the ones that you use to actually like move your body around, and they're the only ones that you have conscious control of, right? Um, and it is, of course, found in the muscle, the skeleton, you're in your, your, in all of your skeletal muscles, right? So all the muscles that you use to move your skeleton around, right? Everything except for your heart and your guts. Okay, so all of your muscles that move your skeleton around are skeletal muscles. Occasionally they can be, so they attach like bones to bones, or occasionally they can attach to skin too, like some of the muscles of your face, like for you to smile. It has to attach to your face, your external skin of your face, right? Okay, so that's skeletal muscle. Check out cardiac muscle. Um, still striated, still stripy, but not like in nice clear bundles. Instead, it's very branchy, right? Got lots of branching going on here. Um, in addition, they are not multinucleated. They are typically, they are generally uninucleate cells. So that means that they, usually the cells have a single nucleus associated with them, not like skeletal muscle that had multiple nuclei associated with each cell, okay? So one nucleus per uh, cardiac muscle cell. And of course, this um, type of muscle tissue um, contracts to propel blood uh, throughout your body, right? So it's cardiac tissue because it is the muscle of your heart, um, and it contracts and, relax and relaxes. It contracts very strongly so that it can push blood throughout your entire body from that single source, from that pump that is your heart. Okay, so it's only found in the walls of your heart. Cardiac muscle. 
You also can identify cardiac muscle versus skeletal muscle by these uh, intercalated discs, okay? So each cell of cardiac muscle um, is separated from the others by a thick um, disc here, a thick, thick line, a thicker, darker line here. Skeletal muscle doesn't have that, right? They're very, very long. Um, you probably won't see the end of one in a picture, but in cardiac muscle, it's branched. There are the single nucleus per cell, and you've got these intercalated discs um, separating the cells out, okay? Finally, smooth muscle is not striated. So if, it's, if you're looking at muscular tissue and you know, you can tell that it's not striated, then you can toss out skeletal and cardiac muscle right off the bat. It is smooth muscle. These cells are spindle shaped, which means that they're skinny at both ends and fat in the middle. And they are um, uninucleated. <laughs> So they have a one central nucleus per cell. Again, no striations, and they are arranged closely to form sheets. Okay. Um, yeah, we use smooth muscle in our bodies to propel substances through our digestive tracts. Um, so we call that. Um, I forget what we call that, whatever. Your body basically being a tube, your digestive system being a tube, basically squeezes all of your food and fluids uh, all the way down the tube through your body, right? And collects um, all the nutrients and the water and stuff that you want from that food um, before excreting all the waste after that. So the, um, the muscles that actually cause that squeezing action that squeezes the food and the fluid along uh, is caused by smooth muscle uh, in the walls of your um, all of your hollow digestive organs. Okay, so in the walls of your hollow organs. So let's look at some examples of these. Ew, no, not that. Ew, not that either. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's look at some skeletal muscle like we have been looking at, or like we looked at in that one example. This skeletal muscle is a, it's a longitudinal section, right? So this is, um, so this is like cutting a muscle like lengthwise, right? So looking um, lengthwise at all of the cells um, um, from a side view of the cells, okay? So we can see, oh, we can't even zoom in really enough to see the striations. I'd have to find you an image um, where you can, oh, hello. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so you can see the striations. So that's how you can tell that you're looking at either skeletal or cardiac muscle tissue. Um, I don't see any uh, intercalated discs, right? There's no lines, no big thick lines uh, differentiating the different cells. These cells are long and skinny and they are multinucleated. There are lots and lots of nuclei per muscle cell. That's how you can tell this is skeletal muscle, right? And if we look at instead this example of skeletal muscle, I don't want you guys to be like weirded out by this. Um, I'm not going to use this example uh, in an exam. I just want to show you that if you took a muscle and you um, and you took a, a transverse section, right? So you cut it, instead of cutting it longitudinally, you cut it in the, down the middle, and you're looking down the tubes, um, those uh, cylinders that are the muscle cells, then they would look like this. Um, so we're looking down the muscle fibers, right? So each one of those is like a little tiny, is like a little muscle cell. And you can see the whole, nuclei. So this is like the muscle, the bundle of muscle fibers. Each of these is a muscle cell and they are multinuclear. You can still see, but you're looking down it, right? Does that make sense? Cardiac tissue, in contrast. Hello. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, so check it out. We've still got We've still got some striation, 
right? It's still stripy, so that's how you know that it's muscle tissue. It's either cardiac or it's skeletal. Um, let's see if we can find, let's see if I can find you a part where we can see some um, intercalated discs. Ooh, check it out, look at that. There's an intercalated disc right there. There's one there and there and there, right? Um, and you can see that the, um, the cardiac muscle cells um, are branching, right? Or this structure, this muscle tissue is, is branching. So it's not like the skeletal muscle um, where it's all, where they're all very lined up one next to each other. There, uh, there is a lot of branching here. Um, and each one of these um, uh, cardiac muscle cells, so here's the intercalated disc, um, can't see the other intercalated disc there, but it's got one nucleus right here, okay? So single nucleus. And are we gonna look down? We're gonna look down it now, I assume. Oh, I just can't get over these slides. They're just so cool. Yeah, I don't think I would torture you guys with this one. Um, yeah, especially since I can't like really even zoom in far enough to see anything. And then the esophagus is a good place to find some smooth muscle tissue. So let's find. Oh yeah. Okay, so we've got no striation. We've got long skinny nuclei because they're in the center of these uh, spindle shaped cells in here. Let's see, what does this look like that you could, that might be confusing for you guys? Uh, any type of cartilage, you're going to see the lacunae um, where the cells live. Um, you don't see, uh, let's see. Here's, so the only thing that this might be confused with might be um, um, cartilage um, because our connective tissues are pretty, pretty identifiable, I'd say, um, oh, or dense, our dense connective tissues maybe. Dense regular and dense irregular might be kind of weird. So what I would have to do is tell you where this is found. So if I told you that this is found in the wall of your esophagus, um, then you're gonna then you're gonna think muscle tissue here, okay? Because the esophagus um, doesn't have um, uh, connective tissue except for maybe um, your here we go our uh, epithelial tissue. So as long as you can tell the difference between your stratified squamous epithelial tissue here uh, at the apical side uh, in towards the lumen. Um, this layer down here is going to be all muscle, actually. All of it, right? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Mus smooth muscle, smooth muscle smooth muscle um, and I don't know what that anyway I'll make it very very clear to you guys we're not learning about that right now either okay Here's another smooth muscle. Oh, just by itself. So here's just a little bit of smooth muscle. So again, no striations um, on the like it short ways, right? Um, we've also got, I saw some striated cardiac muscle where you can see the 
intercalated discs really clearly here on this one. So that's the dead giveaway for cardiac muscle right here. And skeletal muscle. Oh yeah. Very, very striated. No intercalated discs. And you can't see it very clearly in this picture, obviously, but uh, multinucleated. This one might have the appearance of being slightly multinucleated. Oh, really? Okay. But is everybody clear on identifying the different muscular tissue types? Are we feeling okay with that? All right, I'm gonna wrap up. We're gonna talk about nerve tissue. Uh, we did this. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Oh, this is me jumping into um, or talking more deeply about where what these things are. You guys already know this, right? So, like your parietal serous membranes and your visceral serous membranes, where your uh, simple squamous epithelium are found, right? So, just kind of a review at the end of this lecture. It's kind of a review of what these. Um, what we're talking about when I use some of the language in the previous slides in terms of like, um, oh, this is, this is for that example of epithelial tissue, you know, stratified squamous epithelial tissue, you're going to have um, it in the, um, in the mucosa of the mouth, right? So this is showing you what that is. Here's the esophageal lining. That's what that is, the mucosa of the bronchi, etc. cetera. Um, so that's just kind of a easier that's the that's what the skin is in case you didn't know um so this is just kind of a little bit more in depth about what i have already talked about when we talked about epithelial tissue i'm gonna wrap up with nervous tissue Huzzah! which um for this class for part a of bio 50 is super simple um I'll talk a little bit more about it when we do special senses. When we talk about eye and ear, I'm gonna talk more about um, how neurons work. Um, but nervous tissue, and that's in chapter 12. I'll go over a little bit of chapter 12. That's in our syllabus too, so no surprises. Um, nervous tissue is uh, mainly neurons, which are these really cool um, star-shaped cells um, in, um, Oh, don't worry about the extracellular matrix. Um, what's most important is these specifically the cells. So the neurons are the cells of the um, nervous tissue. They are um, sort of star shaped. They have multiple branches coming off of a central cell body. You can tell it's the cell body because that's where the nucleus is. Okay, so you've got a cell body containing a nucleus and multiple branches coming off of that. The longest, biggest branch coming off of um, these guys, like a tail, is called an axon, okay? The littler branches that come off of it are called dendrites. So these, all these littler branches are called dendrites. It's a long, long tail one is called the axon. Um, the dendrites and the axon are used to connect with and, and talk to other uh, neighboring neurons. So that's how signals are passed from your brain to your body and your body to your, from your body to your brain um, is the dendrites attaching to the axon of the next neuron and that neuron's dendrites attaching to the axon of the next neuron. And by attaching, I just mean that they're close enough to um, exchange uh, signals, right? So just it's, it's um, Membrane proteins, just like we talked about, one function of membrane proteins is to uh, send out signals to talk to other neighboring cells, right? This is just an example of that. Neurons talk to each other um, with uh, chemical, electrochemical signals, right? So it's at the very end of that axon, the axon terminal that talks to or sends out a little uh, particle that is accepted by the dendrites of the next neuron um, and it tells it to continue the message along, right? So your nervous tissue transmits electrical and chemical, well, electrochemical signals from uh, your sensory receptors uh, in your body, right? Your photoreceptors of your eyeballs, your audio receptors in your, in your inner ear, um, 
the um, sensory receptors in your skin um, to and if and um, from sensory receptors and from sensory receptors to your central nervous system and from your central nervous system to your effectors, which are your muscles and the things in your body that your brain tells what to do. Okay, so um, it is nervous tissue is found, of course, in your brain, in your spinal cord, and then in all of those nerves. The sensory nerves that send information back to your brain and the nerves that go from your brain to your muscles to tell them what to do, right? Okay, that's nervous tissue. Um, is there anything in particular that you want me to go back over that was particularly um, horrifying? Um, <laughs> or do you wanna just call it, say it's recorded, visit it later, and then you guys write down all your questions and then maybe we'll do an office hours thing next week. What do you think? All of your brains are mash, or you guys all left like 20 minutes ago. You're gone. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> <They're all> <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking to myself. <laughs> I'm good. You guys good? You guys ready to call it? I'm ready to call it. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Okay. All right, yes. I'm gonna upload this um, into the module, into the appropriate module, which I guess is week six at this point. So I'm gonna upload it into week six module. Um, that should work. Um, if for some reason it doesn't, if like something happened in the file, if it got corrupted or something happened, it's still converting. It's is a long ass thing. I don't think my whole like stop recording and start recording thing, I don't think that worked. I think it just records the meeting. Um, and basically just like skips wherever I wasn't recording. So it's going to be long. It's going to be long and huge. I'll see if I can't get it into an editing software and maybe chop it up. Um, I think I have something that I can do that with around here somewhere. Um, worst case, I will have it up for you guys tonight um, before like 10 o'clock, say, but tonight. Okay. Um, best case. Um, I or well, mm, would you guys prefer that I try and chop it up? Or do you mind having a massive three hour video uploaded to Canvas? Do you care? I think if you could try to chop it up, that'd be great. If not, it's, I mean, it's no big deal. We can always just, you know, it's you good. know, yeah, fast forward. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it is what it is. I'll see what I can do. Um, Cause that seems like a lot of work on your end. So mm -hmm. it's, if I can find something simple uh, to do it in, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be that bad, but I don't like, I'm like, I have iMovie, like I'm sure it can't be that bad, but if it turns out to be like some sort of hellish nightmare, then yeah, then it'll just be a big, huge file um, on Canvas uh, for you guys to fast forward. iMovie is actually pretty easy. You just op upload it there and then you just kind of like chop it off. Yeah. I don't see it being a problem. Much, if I yeah. can, as long as I, keep saving it so I don't accidentally like mm -hmm. delete half of it. <laughs> and you said that we, you're going to have like office hours. So like if we were to just go back, for instance, there's certain slides me, I may have missed and re listen to you. Um, are we going to be able to go over it on Thursday? Or are you just kind of going to do what, the same so what thing I, what I'm going to do is I'll send you guys an email, um, tomorrow maybe, or, um, yeah, probably tomorrow to, um, if you guys would like to um, have an office hours and when would be the best time for most of us to do that um, and just do the best we can in terms of how many of us can actually make it. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll try a, a poll or something. Okay. And then as far as SI, it's, oh, it's only on Tuesdays right now, right? As During far as I know. Time. Yeah. As far okay. That's fine. And then on, on Thursday, so what do we do the same thing? We just log in at two o'clock and then you're just going to run from two to around this time. Yeah. I'll lecture for as long as I need to. It's going to be the integumentary system. It won't be nearly as long as this. Thank God. Mm -hmm. um, I'll like run through that and then I'll just like leave it. I'll just leave. I'll just be here. I'll just read a book or something. And then you just can yell at me if you have a question. And this, that you said that's Thursday. I'm yeah. sorry. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to record it too. So any, any of the questions that you have, um, 
or I'll record the lecture part. So try to ask during the lecture part, um, but I'll be there. Okay, so Thursday we're just finishing up chapter four. Or are we going into chapter? On Thursday we're gonna do chapter five. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so for the four labs that are due yeah. on Thursday, yes. do we just like scan them and turn them in on campus? Um, you can, uh, no, yes, yeah, scan them or take a picture of them, uh, whatever is easiest for you to get any kind of a visual image file and upload on the canvas. That'll work just okay. fine. And I am going to extend that due date to next Thursday. Um, so you guys okay. have more time to, to do that. Since and you're lecturing through um, lab and lecture time just this week, if we have questions about the lab itself, should we just email you directly? You guys want to start a discussion specific to the lab? We could do that. I bet more people would have questions, would have the same questions. Yeah. So I might yeah, as well. I'll, I'll start a discussion for uh, like a histology, a histology discussion specifically on Canvas. Is that okay? Yeah, that if, you guys, if you guys like subscribe to discussions or whatever, um, you, get, you get notifications. Like, do you get, do you, does it tell you when? I respond, or do you have to keep checking back? No, it's just when there's a new comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So well, we'll do that. Let's do that. Um, and that'll be in addition to, um, I'll send a poll out to see if you guys, when we can do a, some sort of an office hours thing. Awesome. Thank you, Professor. No problem. What else, you guys? We still got 10 minutes. <laughs> Nothing. I'm going to see if I can upload this. I'm going to see if I can chop it up and then I'm going to see if I can upload it. Um, and then tomorrow, um, look for an email from me. Um, but as always, you know, let me know if you have questions. Um, or if anything, you know, gets messed up. Uh, if the file doesn't open or anything weird like that, let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'll be in touch. And um, this was intense but it's fun and it worked um so what did you guys think of the format of me like switching back and forth between the powerpoint and the other websites and stuff is that okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. it works it works for me no it's, it's weird <laughs> it's weird <laughs> but um it's how we're gonna do now for lectures anyway so um yeah it's basically gonna be me like showing you guys how the website can help you do the lab. Um, and then answering any questions that you have, because it's on an individual basis, you know, to dig around Wiley Plus and use, use the things that it's got, like the real anatomy, the dissection, you know, all that cool stuff that it's got to get your questions answered and get a, get a grasp on this material without actually grasping the material. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, then I'm going to call it. I'm going to stop the share, which I guess is just what that is. And I'm going to end the meeting. So have a great night, you guys. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> and I'll see you on Thursday. I'll be in touch tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank Bye. you. Have a good night, Professor. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.